The winner is... The winner is Francis Ford Coppola for the Hi, my name is Carlos Rivera, and today we're going to be discussing one of the most influential filmmakers to date, Francis Ford Coppola. Throughout his career, he, along with Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and Martin Scorsese, defined the era of 1970s filmmaking I like to call neoclassicalism by using techniques that made films parallel to literature and gravitas and cultural influence. You lousy bastard! But more specifically, without Coppola's Godfather trilogy, modern cinema would be a drag. And modern filmmakers like Alejandro González Iñárritu, Bennett Miller, David Fincher, and the Coen brothers have proven that it isn't. So today, more specifically than Coppola, we're going to be talking about the literature in the Godfather trilogy and how it helped change film for the better. And fair warning, this is the only spoiler alert. I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. Take a look at this scene from part two when Michael and Kay fight about their marriage. Coppola first gives us an establishing shot of the location and then cuts to Kay pacing behind Michael and Rocco. This tells us that Kay is nervous about explaining to Michael that she wants to leave. Notice also that Diane Keaton's body language is tense and still throughout the scene, whereas Pacino is always moving. Rocco dismisses himself and Kay explains she wants to leave Michael. Michael, I'm not going back to Nevada. The shot, however, lingers on Michael for a little so we can see his reaction to what Kay says. This is important to remember, as Kay first wants to hide her true feelings and reasons for leaving. Coppola then cuts to Kay as she tries to say on Michael's good side, but then it cuts back to Michael as he is now concerned with the subject matter at hand. At first, Michael tries to change the subject and focus the discussion on things he wants to talk about, not Kay. But she interrupts with an, I think it's too late for changes, Michael. And continues, but Michael disrupts her now. I myself I wasn't going to say anything, and now I'm too late. Throughout this argument, Michael is always trying to maintain power, no matter what Kay says or does. It's crucial for him to win the scene because it's a matter of respect. But this is all at the expense of his marriage and his love for Kay. The more power he tries to maintain, the worse it all gets. This is shown through the dialogue. Michael, you say you love me, and then you talk about allowing me to leave! as well as the couple's distance and several of the frames. And despite all his efforts, Michael is losing. The first sign of this is when he turns and grabs a drink of water. Kay is still fighting though, and doesn't need anything. The second sign is when Michael decides to light a cigarette and then gets closer to Kay, whereas she remains rock solid both physically and in her defense. Kay is still winning the scene. And even after she tells Michael that her miscarriage was actually an abortion, Michael is the first one to leave the frame. Or in terms of the scene, he retreats. You won't take my children! You're my children. Kay has won. We've seen this before though. In the very last scene of the first movie, Michael lies to Kay about killing Carlo as he lied to her about bringing Vincenzo, Pantangeli's brother, to the hearings in part two. Whether or not Kay ends up believing him in both scenes is ambiguous, but Coppola foreshadows both the argument and Kay's victory. Michael not only needs someone else to close the door for him in part one, but who gets the last shot of the movie? Kay does. It's only after Michael secures the deaths of all his enemies that he can shut the door on the only thing that made him human and finally win the scene. Going back to what I said about The Godfather being the trilogy that defined modern cinema, just this one type of scene is very influential. In Interstellar, Brand runs away here, and Cooper wins the scene here. In Django Unchained, Django and Schultz submit here, and Candy wins here. You will be serving white cake. In No Country for Old Men, Carla Jean loses here. It's just you. And Anton Chigur wins here. I got here the same way that Carla did. And more personally, in my movie, The Usuals, Lewis loses here. K. And K wins just, here. Just go. In reality, however, there is no true point where modern cinema took its turn. 
Some people credit Jaws with inventing the blockbuster. Others say Star Wars started the trend for visual effects driven movies. Third parties credit Taxi Driver for reinventing the character study. And I credit The Godfather for reinventing all aspects of film for the modern day. And even if you don't particularly like these movies, you can't deny that they make for some damn fine cinema.